All right, everyone, I'd like to welcome to the program retired NFL linebacker, former SPGA employee, and current PGA Tour rules official, Mark Dusbavik. That was a mar- that was a, uh, a mouthful there, Mark, but how's it going? It's going well. Thank you very much. It's good to be there. Yeah, it's good to have you, and you have such a unique background. Um, you know, I guess we'll start off with, can you give our listeners a, a quick rundown of sort of your day-to-day or, I guess, week-to-week duties out there on tour? I know you're currently out at the Tour Championship right now uh, doing an advanced scout, so maybe that's a good place to start. Okay. Yeah. Um, everybody on there, – there's 14 of us on staff as the rules officials, and we all have approximately four tournaments that um, – for lack of a better term, there there are tournaments, and they're the ones that we uh, we monitor and stay in touch with throughout the year. Uh, mine happened to be um, Tour Championship, uh, the uh, Tournament of Champions in Kapalua, uh, the RBC Canadian Open, and uh, the Zozo Championship in in Tokyo. And um, that's obviously changed over the years, but um, we are. We do everything from doing a site visit to today I spotted uh, TV towers and shot link towers and safari cable and did the OB for the course. And now I'm actually checking out to see uh, what construction was done on the course while I was in my office. So you basically um, prepare everything for the entire week leading up to the golf tournament. Then when all the rules officials come in, you give them their assignments. Uh, make sure they know where everything is and parking and obviously COVID testing now and and then um, assign who's going to be the uh, the setup guys and their positions on the golf course and you kind of uh, you kind of manage it. So it's kind of, it's kind of a good break from regular duties as being just a rules official. Yeah, that's great. Sounds like you're the guy that. Uh you know, prevents any surprises from happening out there. And that's that's certainly a good thing when it comes to the rules of golf. So before, you know, before establishing yourself out on tour, you bounced around a bit, first as a volunteer with us at the SCGA, and then you landed a full-time gig with the Metropolitan PGA section. And then you came back to the SCGA uh, to work for both our championships and course rating departments before then fleeing for the greenest of pastures on tour. So, I guess my question is, how did you know that golf was the avenue for you um, after retiring from football? Well, after I retired from football, I, I immediately went into um, the financial business. And I and I worked in Chicago um, for, I think, two and a half years at uh, an options exchange company. So I was down on the floor. Um, I started out as a clerk, and I, then I went upstairs and did some trading on from the desk upstairs. And... Um, and then I moved to New York and got a job at an institutional brokerage firm in in Jersey City, and um, and then moved out to L.A. and I tried to find a financial job in L.A., but um, the only thing that was offered to me were, were uh, retail brokers, and I didn't want to be a retail broker. So um, I happened to be uh, sitting. Uh, at the Fox and Hounds, which is very close to the SCGA office. And, and I realized that, um, you know, everything I've always done as far as growing up, playing junior golf at my club, uh, playing golf with my dad, caddying for, um, for various club pros around in little pro-am tournaments and playing golf with my college buddies, playing golf with my NFL buddies, uh, going on vacation and finding out where good golf courses were and, Hey, maybe I could get a job in golf. So I um I called up my pro up in Minneapolis and and he um he put me in touch with uh the Minnesota Golf Association who then put me in touch with Kevin Heaney at the SCGA. And um I interviewed with Kevin to see if I could be a, a volunteer since I didn't have any experience. I figured the best way to start is to be a volunteer and see if I I like it. And what was great about that experience with Kevin on the course rating team is, is it opened up my eyes to so many different avenues within the golf world. I didn't know that they existed. I knew that you could be a tour pro, a club pro and a caddy. And I didn't know that there were handicapping club relations, course ratings, um, you know, amateur tournaments and things. I wasn't 
in tune with it that much. But then I realized there were so many more opportunities out there, and I really, I really dug it. So I started applying for jobs around the country and got the one in New York. Yeah, so, you know, what were some of your greatest challenges that you faced when you traded in that NFL playbook for the Rules of Golf booklet? Um, it's probably not the greatest thing, but, but I'll, I'll say I still struggle with it today is that, um, you know, I, I've grown up and, and, and I've always been in team sports and, um, and being united as a team, being solidified as a group, you're, you're so much stronger and you're so much better. And you're, you're only as good as your weakest link, as they say. And when we played in football, we all had to be together. And if one guy broke down on his assignment and he didn't cover the A gap and and he covered the B gap instead, and big game because the runner went through the A gap. Um, everybody has a responsibility. But in golf, I noticed that it's an individual sport. And people who grew up in it, people who only had this as a career, sometimes that's their mentality is they're very individual. Yeah. And so it's hard to bring people together to for the common good of the tournament or the or the staff. And um and so I try to always preach that and and push that upon everybody that uh that we're a team and we need to work together. So that's that's the one struggle with golf I have is just I don't I don't like the individual side. Yeah, that's that's certainly a unique perspective. Um and I, I would not disagree with you there. So most most people think the rules officials, you know, they just show up the week of the tournament or, and are basically on call, you know, just sitting in a cart with their with their radio and waiting for somebody to call in a rules official. But can you explain a little bit? And you did you did partially when we opened up this pod. But can you explain a little bit more about the advanced prep that goes into marking a course, identifying problem areas, and just things of that nature? Yeah, I mean, I'm working with the agronomist here closely and. Um... And we're we're making sure the rough height's what we want it to be. And um, by preparing now with the green speeds, the rough height will put us on the right projection a week from now, so the tournament comes in perfect shape. Um, obviously, you have obstacles you can't control with mother mother nature, so things come up. Um, you're working with the local tournament to to um, that group that's on site every day, and you're. You're talking to them about what keys you're going to use and, and where they can build a structure and how how the structure is a temporary immovable obstruction for me. And so now I have to have it in a certain place. I know that you have to, you know, we're in the entertainment business as well, and we have to we have to look towards how we can make things great for for not only the TV viewers but our sponsors and the corporate partners. So we're trying to bring everybody together and make it a great event in so many different ways. And, and so the rules is, are probably just a small, small part of what we even do. Very interesting. So, you know, on the rules angle, though, I, I do have a question here. What, do you have a very memorable ruling that stands out to you or any uh, peculiar rulings that maybe stand out as humorous or just straight up weird? Um. Yeah, I've had a couple. Um, uh, I've had one where where the uh, um, where a ball was in a penalty area at the time. It was a lateral hazard, and um, it was in the hole of a burrowing animal, but in the penalty area, you don't get relief for that. And um, as I was trying to explain this to this player who um, happened to be a, a buddy of mine. Um, and he's trying to wear me out about how I'm wrong on the ruling. And and all of a sudden, a, a crab came out of the hole and grabbed the ball and sucked it down. <laughs> so he just kind of went off and tried to tried to get relief for that. So ah, uh, that's that's interesting. Dinner dinner for the crab though. <laughs> yeah. Little we'll pro v. <laughs> So, you know, being that we're only a few weeks away from the football season, we got to talk a little bit about your background on the gridiron. So you, you played under the legendary Lou Holtz at Minnesota, um, and then you're drafted by the Houston Oilers, who traded you to the Vikings, where you played three seasons, um, with a defensive coaching staff that included Monty Kiffin and Pete Carroll. So 
what what did you learn from your NFL days that maybe has translated to your role as a rules official? Um, I think besides the team aspect that I mentioned earlier, I think it's just the, the hard work and preparation. Um, in football, you have to prepare for everything, every single scenario. And and I can think of certain plays and certain games where something happened and we were prepared for it. So a lot of times in football, a lot of a lot of spectators or or just armchair quarterbacks out there, they you know they get so disappointed with why why did they run a certain play and there's no you know they're, they're not gaining anything on that. Well, a lot of it is set up. It may be set up for later in the game. It may be set up for later in the year. It may be set up for next year. So coaches are always preparing. It's a big chess game. And and there was a time when we played um, we played Philadelphia on Monday Night Football. And the very first play of the game, they came out in a formation that we had never seen before. But because we had our, our checkoffs and our and – our, um, our responsibilities where if something certain happens, you're going to take this, this, and this, then we were prepared. And um, I ended up jumping out to cover a tight end who ended up like a wide receiver, and they came out in a different formation, a different personnel. It just it was meant to throw us off and catch us off guard. And, and that was, that was um, great preparation by our coaches. Um, another time we played – we played um, Cincinnati, and Sam Weiss was the coach. And he knew, he knew that if he motioned the offside running back towards my strong side, I'm over the tight end, I have, I have the, um, the running back until he gets to the tight end. If he crosses the tight end, I now have the tight end, the strong safety has the running back. And you have to communicate, well, of course, they snap the ball as soon as the running back gets directly over the tight end. So now he purposely does that to, to confuse you to see who's going to mess up on their coverage. So that's the great thing about, about football is that there's this great strategy chess game that goes on every play people don't know about. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, just the preparation that, that goes into it. It seems like it's a common theme throughout your your day to day as a as a rules official. Um, I do have just one last question for you. You know, I know you're a Southland resident still, and you know your time at the SDGA, both both course rating and in the championships department. You've been at a lot of golf courses. What are some of your favorites in SoCal? <laughs> um, well, I love Riviera. I think that's a great golf course. Um, I think the the Golf Club of Montecito is a fantastic course. Um, Palma Valley, I love Palma Valley. Um, I think Oak, Oakmont's a great golf course. And um, But the one I usually would play is I drive all the way out to see me to Rustic Canyon. Mm-hmm. I think oh, yeah. Rustic gives you so many different options. Bill Hans designed it where he you have to really think about, am I going to – take a risk off the tee and have an easier shot in if it works or, or vice versa. So I really like the way he designed that golf course. Those are all good answers. We, we, we are specifically fond of, of rustic here in, in this camp personally. So good answers, Mark. And, um, you know, I think that's it for this session of quarantine Chronicles. So thanks so much for your time, Mark. Good luck uh, next week and uh, all, the, all the best to you. Stay safe. Thanks so much. Okay. All right. Take care. Bye.